it's Friday. I'm going to try to do a stream or put out a video Fridays. I'm blurry. The camera software is garbage. Let me try to fix that. I'll do. Anyhow, so if you see a video or a stream on a Wednesday or a Thursday, you won't see one that Friday. I'm going to try to commit to uh, one a week. Should be doable. Kind of got uh, things leveled out now, and we don't have much time today. It's going to be a short one because um, we've got until the baby wakes up, and she's been sleeping about an hour, so we'll see. <clears throat> NCH been around for decades. They make a piece of software for everything. And for anybody getting into reverse engineering, their software is definitely a good starting point. Um, not that it's useless, but it's, we're going to say, minimal. And to learn the principles of reverse engineering, things to look at, things to look for, um, it's good, good to do. So let's, uh, without further ado, open up some uh, X32. <laughs> and let's attach to enter code if you already purchased why did I open express burn no oh, uh. let's attach to debut by NCH just came in from outside. It's cold. Still wearing my jacket. My hair's a little messed up. Don't care. <laughs> okay, so we're going to attach and hit run. Still running. Everything's good. We're going to view modules. If you don't see modules, update your software because it should be there. I'm going to go to debut.exe and do control A. That's going to tell us down here that it's going to analyze. You'll see these nice little brackets and blocks and stuff. And before we do anything, let's just go for it. One of the key things, don't sell yourself short because sometimes it works. Let's take a look at strings. And now we do notice it says unlicensed here. That could be something. If we go in, we see register software, registration code. We hit register. We've got to put something in. It should be numbers, dash some letters. Invalid old version code. Generic. The code you attempted to use is not valid for version 5.33. It was for version 4.xx or previous versions. All right. We're going to hit cancel. And now that we've hit cancel, let's uh, cancel this. Take a look at our strings. Let's look at license. License software, license two, unlicensed. So these could be titles. Has been registered too many computers. Okay. Canceled. Cody enters not valid. You must activate online. The professional edition license also. View pricing. Unlicensed software. Thank you for installing. Accept the license agreement. Accept. Unlicensed. License, license user, license two. So, first take a look at where these are at. We're going to look at the addresses, licensed user, CD. They're a ways apart. Now let's see what they have in common. I can't read that in the chat. Okay, so first thing I notice is that we have license to, licensed software, unlicensed, and then I see these little, what I call carrots, or jump carrots, or jump landing points. I can read that, hello. And we see different ways to get to these points. So here, we click on it, we show how we got there. Unlicensed, home use only, we jumped from here, so obviously we don't want to jump there. We get to here by jumping from here. We don't know what this call does, but if we hit enter, we'll see that it brings us into possibly registration. I'm going to go back. We're going to jump here. This jumps us over. After
after comparing this memory address with nine, jump if above or equal. So if it's greater than or equal to nine, we're gonna jump. Otherwise, we're gonna go to here and do a call, compare something at ESP plus four. Where's my stack? In my registers, there we go. With zero, if it's not equal, we're gonna jump to here, which is license two. And then it looks like there's a generic licensed software Maybe a master code, no name, <clears throat> which goes to here. So once we're past this jump, we're licensed. So whatever we're doing is happening with this. And we're comparing that same address with A. And if we're not equal, we're going to here. If we are A, we're going to here, which looks like some form of registration not sure so let's put a breakpoint here and go through that registration one two three four five six some letters register cancel we didn't see anything so we have a breakpoint i'm going to hit rewind and see if we pause on that anywhere on boot and we do and then we'll see f8 we're going to test AL at zero, jump if equal. We're going to go down to here, and it's going to look for something somewhere. But otherwise, if this call had returned AL being one, we would have been fine. So if we come down and look for the return, we're going to see clear AL is here, but then we have a jump to here. Testing AL, pairing some stuff, there's AL. Now we have a jump to here, which does some stuff, moves to zero, sets AL to one, and returns. So however we get to there is what we want to do. And we see that that can be from either here or here. Comparing some address in memory with three, or comparing ESI and EAX after this call. Now this call, we'll see, is going to move. Well, we're going to get EAX from, looks like maybe a, a time for your trial or something. Going to get a system time as file time, which is just a more accurate way of getting time. It's going to add to that. It's going to push a number. It's going to do with add with carry. It's going to do a call. And then eventually we do some moving and we return. I'm not interested. What I am interested in is, again, how we get to here. We can get there from here. So how do we get to here? Well, we have to avoid this return, which means we have to take, we have to get to here. So if we click that, we'll see that we get there from all of these places. We can simply get to this one. Jump it below or equal. Anyways, um, and we can get to this one from a jump we can get to this one from a jump and then we would need to see what's going on in this call however if we go back a little bit further we have a move ebx1 and then we have a jump that goes over and comes in now if we land here then it is going to be hopefully zero so that we can take this jump so to get to here, we're comparing the return of this subtracted by that with some random number that's hard-coded. And if we're greater, we're going to jump. And if we are not greater, we're going to compare EBX with this. If we're below or equal, we're going to jump to here. So... We can get there just from these, and those are going to come from this call here, 
And all we know is that this call, after doing a subtraction of whatever is this, needs to be greater than or equal to that. Actually, if it's less than or equal to that, but we are below or equal to that in EBX, we should be okay because then it should just work. So let's put a breakpoint in here and see what's going on in there. And we'll also put one right here. I'm gonna hit rewind. Welcome. All right, we're gonna hit run and we'll see that we pause right here inside that call. And let's see what happens. F8, we're gonna get a system time as file time. You'll see that you know, that's a timestamp. <laughs> Now the curious thing is, maybe this is the timestamp. Yeah, there you go. It's more like it. So returns in the ECX, but that wouldn't help us either. Curious thing here is that after doing that call, we're overriding that. Oh, okay. It's stored on the stack. Old school calls. Moving it up to EAX. And if we grab this number and do timestamp, did you ever try trace from prologue to destination easier? Prologue? What do you mean prologue? Eh. Well, that timestamp would be pretty old. That can't be correct. Anyhow, um, function pro. Yeah, you could. Anyhow, back to work here. So, then we're moving the ECX, this value. And now we're going to add to EAX some number, which gives us a much bigger number. And then it's going to push that some number. And I add with carry ECX. And then we're going to push ECX. We're going to push EAX. I wonder what that is. Then we're going to do a call. Oops. There. And then this call is going to do some stuff. And it's going to return either an empty EDX and one less ESI or we're just going to Clear it from that. So depending on literally an or, we're either going to do all this or we're not and we're going to jump out. I'm going to skip the whole call together and just watch it. Okay. Anyhow, uh, move ECX EVP plus eight zeros. Test ECX jump if equal. So if it were not zero, we would be moving that to the address of ECX. We don't actually want to do that because that would be zero and it would just cause an access violation. And so we're going to leave and we're going to return. And now the important part. Version check after crash. Did we crash? I don't think we crashed, but maybe we did crash. I'm going to hit F9 and find out. All right. We have paused on this call, and we remember that this is 
having to test AL and then determine whether or not we move AL1 in return or do a bunch of other junk. Go in there. And we're going to hit F7. We're going to follow this guy through. We have ID, registration. We do a call. Okay, we got nothing. It's going to you know, look at some registry keys. Gonna grab those. Don't really care what it's doing. Push a format. Contains invalid number of uncommitted pages. That's just generic key. Okay. Push zero. Do another call. And that call is a call to this function that we were in already. Bring that out. Put one here and hit F9. <clears throat> now we're going to subtract from this number. What's stored at ESP plus 10? What is ESP plus 10, do you say? Well, I'll double click here. It's this value right here. And we're going to do that subtraction. And we're going to be left with this much. Add ESP4. Bloop. We shift it out. Compare EAX with FO99CO. Okay. And we are greater. And we'll see that now we're going to go to here. Which is okay. Probably a stupid question, but when you're able to reverse a program, could you potentially add features or fix bugs? Actually, yes. That's kind of the primary use of reverse engineering is to provide backward compatibility or fix a bug or to add integration or add you know the ability to create plugins like adding a plugin system yeah no that's not a stupid question at all not asked enough okay so now we're, we're on the right track we know that this is okay it's going to get us our end result and we're going to hit f8 we're going to land here Test EVX. Now it's going to say jump below or equal. We're on the right track still. We're not clearing AL. Land down here. Now this call is going to do some stuff again. And we see that we have move AL1 return, move AL1 return. But where is the return that clears it? Don't see one. Oh, there's a XOR and then equal, equal. Does this go all the way to a return? No. Oh, right here. XOR ALL. So this one would be our bad one. Now there's a good chance that we could just patch this <clears throat> let's see if we end up here i'm going to hit f8 and what do you know we end up right here <clears throat> and you'll see that the very next thing that happens and also this is to be noted that in this one ebp the memory address at ebp gets set to zero and then we add al1 and we leave this one gets set to three, this one gets set to two. So we may also need to patch that. Or the bad message that brought us here, one of these, we could just tell it to bring us here instead, or here even. So let's continue through this. Uh, delete this note. And instead of doing that, we want to go, how did we get there? Was it this one, this one, or one of these? That's enough of those. And now we're going to return, and we're going to test AL. Obviously, we're going to be equal to zero, so it's going to jump up. Otherwise, it would do this, that. And eventually, this, which is one. Now, the jumping up may just give us another chance. Let's see what happens. Nope, it 
it's going to do this, clear it, and leave. So now that we've got another breakpoint, I'm going to restart. Hey, Josh, what's up? Absolutely, I am Judd TV. That is definitely a good use case. A lot of times, um, well, not a lot of times, but a few times I've done work for people where they have an old piece of software they want to integrate with a new piece of software. And that's exactly what you end up doing, is reverse engineering it to add a way for them to do that. So this one is the one that, it wasn't this one, past that one. This one is the one that is going to send us down to that. So instead of doing that, let's move it to here. So let's do copy address. And instead of doing that, let's do that. See, now we're going to jump to right here. We're moving the zero, we're popping, we're moving AL, we're returning. We're going to test AL. We see we're not going to jump. We're going to compare ESP plus C with three. Now you'll notice that we did set that by jumping. Or no, we didn't because we set it to zero. So, but if we need to, we can. However, instead, since it is, th or is not three, it's zero, we're going to jump all the way out to the goods section that says pop, pop, set this probably the key because this is zero that's negative one you know negative one is bad zero is good move al1 pop pop return and you'll see now this is not equal to zero we're going to hit al1 we're going to return and now let's see where we go comparing that with nine well ours is zero jump if above or equal it's not so gonna look for a name in the registry and it's likely not gonna find one because I never put one but we could add it later if we need to and then it's gonna return tests BL BL is zero jump if not equal so if it wasn't zero we jump it is so we are licensed software now let's just hit run again we pause here don't really care gonna hit run gonna remove our breakpoints and we'll notice license software register is still there. Let's check the about license software. Now, what is the difference? The only user should close it once. So To use all the features of the paid version, please use the link to buy it. Uh, what's the difference? What can't we do in the uh, Tell me. Okay. Firefox and stupid updates. Every, every time I run it on this. Every time. I run. Okay. Um, capture. Let's see. Is there a comparison between free and not free? How about that? Okay. Okay. Pro edition. Um, hmm. Does anyone know? Yeah, here's all their other softwares you can. I should really look into what the limitations are before doing this. 
Let's do... Can't run a preview. I just hit record. I will not be hitting Control F10 to stop. Start. You got any capture? Any resource to many application like ammonium? Recommended switch to fast capture mode. In this mode, do. Okay. Sure, switch it. Okay, I guess it's recording. And it's recording audio. And we can add a watermark. Okay, that's cool. Color and video effects, options. Recording be stopped. Okay. Go preview actual size. Hmm. I'm not certain that. Oh, look at all this other software from them. Camera overlay. Cool. All right. Well, let's get rid of that. And pause and run a region. Oh, that's a good point. Go. Stop. Recordings. <laughs> AVI. Oops. Um. Recording. All right. That's fun. All right. Let's run the original real quick. Let's go right click, patches, export. Sure. What was this? NCH screen record. Just so we don't have to find all that again. <clears throat> Close that. Let's run the original. H video. What was it? Debut. That's that's what it's called. It's called debut. Licensed user, unlicensed software. Okay. Unlicensed, non-commercial, home use only. Okay. Let's go video options. Okay. Oh, encoder options. Capture, sure. Record. Recording. All right. That's recording. Watermark. Overlay options menu, that's fine. Well, shoot, I guess we didn't have much of an much of an incentive. How's it going? It's going all right. How about yourself? Schedule recording? Can do that too. Well, don't know yet. Let's see. Ah. Let's take a look at the recording. Well, it doesn't actually record because yeah. I can't even see if it's like putting a watermark or something. We can't find the actual. Cancel. What else do we have here? Hmm. Good to be back. 
It is, really, it is. Been missing this stuff. Launch. Well. Or um products debut. Okay, I know to download the free version. Howdy soda. Can't read that. I'm guessing the limitation is like a watermark or something. Let me grab it outside of the VM and see if we can find out. Let's see. Okay. Video software. Debut. Check final interview. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. I just can't do it in the VM for whatever reason. It uh, doesn't actually record the screen. It's kind of wigs out. All right. As I say, there may not be any limitations because it's non-commercial use only, which everybody follows when they use their free software. Uh, fly. That's where I like locked up my computer for a minute. Go primary mode, secondary mode, and let's go record. Let's go to MP4 record. Uh, no use current mode. This is a test of the regular unlicensed non-commercial home use only version stop recording the I mean the quality is not that great I mean screen Exit full screen. I don't see any limitations. Uh, they pass. Well, let's go to fast capture video option. Shrink to 720. We're going to go down to 24 FPS. Throwback. Coder options. High quality. Fast capture. Let's hit record record screen recording mode in the preview it shows absolutely nothing Up. and recordings pick one screen that looks even worse as in high quality uh yeah i don't see 
Well, this is like a time-based limitation or something. Don't see any limitation as of yet. So jump back over here where you guys can see me. But let's see what happens when open not that rewind patches import. Uh, let's do export. Damn it. I think it was not in downloads on the network drive. That's not going to work. Grr. Grr. Just time out already. Jesus criminy. Thank you. Still running. Oh. Okay, so when you close it, it goes to the thank you page. Let's see if it does that after we register it. That's kind of annoying. You could stop that another way, but. <clears throat> okay. Patches. Let's not click downloads. Go to okay. Patched patches. We're going to patch file. Where are you? Okay. Close. A view, video capture software, open file location, good heavens. Copy, license software, license software, no nag screens yet. Register is still there. Not sure that that goes away or not. Mm. Let's see what happens when we close it. No nag screen. Does it do it every time? Unlicensed. Exit. No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, the purchase online has gone too. Optional programs and extra for debut. No thanks. So optional programs. There's an auto patch after restart plugin or Oh, that's kind of cool. Take a look at that. I do like m making copies just because I used to have a really bad habit of overwriting the original like every time <laughs> and then I'd have to reinstall it to go back but yeah okay so that's probably gonna wrap it up for today um, yeah probably but real quick what we're going to do for just a couple minutes here is look at how else we could have done this. Sorry if you just popped in. The video will make itself and be available right after the stream. Uh, DVR is on. You can rewind this, see the whole thing. But, um, yeah, try, gonna, again, going to try to be doing at least one a week. Um, Fridays, if you don't see me Friday, you'll see me Wednesday or Thursday. And I did say in the beginning that this one would be a short one because uh, we have until the baby wakes up. And she's been sleeping longer than 
expected already, so y'all got lucky. Um, find references to search for current module strings. Always start with it. Sometimes it works. But yeah, going to commit to, hey, Fridays, that's our days, unless you see me Wednesday or Thursday, which means I'm not going to do one Friday. Um, and then license. Loose whisker there. Hey, have a good day at work, man. And we looked at these ones. Let's look at unlicensed software, unlicensed basic free version, register with different license, licensed user. Could you enter upgrade the professional edition license also enables more features in debut. Could you tell me what the features are? When you register this prompt will be displayed every time you run to what? Oh. Well, that prompt doesn't happen anyways. Anyways, um let's look at this one here. Hey, it's great to have you guys. It's awesome the community and how like supportive y'all are and understanding. Like really. So this one brings us to a lot of the same things. We see the zero, the eight, the nine, we see that same address, uh the registration, and this is the license user, which get we get there from here with that being a zero. And we get to here from this where AL and this is, I bet you anything, the same. Oh, it's not. This one's different. Uh, here we have move AL a byte or set AL to zero. This jumps over it. And is this called for multiple locate? Yeah. So this could be something else where you just change this one binary edit to a zero ah okay so now it just jumps there and then returns and if we hit run I'm gonna land here still because I have breakpoints so this one's gonna hit zero so we know that we did the right one can I suggest an old software that I wanted to crack 15 years ago? Sure. Suggest whatever you'd like. Very old, not easy anymore. Yeah. So we did the right one because here, obviously, it's going to fail. It's going to come back zero, but it might still show the licensed two or whatever. Uh, licensed user on licensed software, purchase online. But let's see what happens. Unlicensed. Help. Boot. Unlicensed. Nothing there. And we could, maybe we'll do this next time. It's called Catalog Max. All right, I'm grabbing that out of the chat. Catalog Max. We'll look at that. Uh, but maybe next time we'll actually look at the algorithm used for this. I don't know if it does calculate one or not, or if it just checks it online. It claims to be checking online it says that your code could get blocked uh, which would require some type of online checking obviously unless the program is going to download a block list which would just be stupid so yeah and good to see you vicus and just here for the wrap up again i'm going to bounce out now um there's always more than one way to skin a cat and i'll reverse whatever you want me to look at dot net Sure, and I used primarily DNSpy for .NET apps. And other than that, one thing I do have planned in the future is uh, I'm going to write a program. We're going to start basic, so don't get scared. Y'all are going to try and crack it. I'll take the submissions. We'll go over the submissions in assembly so however you do it it's fine i'm going to look at them live in assembly or in ollie or however x32 and then we're going to step it up from there so basically 
I'll make a program. Y'all going to try to reverse it. Then I'm going to show you how to reverse it. We'll look at any submissions, if there are any. Um, and then we're going to step that up from basic to more advanced to packed to more advanced packed to um, anti-debugging to more advanced anti-debugging. We'll just kind of, you know, kind of go from there. Like maybe a stream will be me writing the program. You guys can watch me write it. That's fine. Um, and then you'll have to try to reverse it. Um, and then that next section will be, I'll take those submissions from the one that I just wrote and we'll look over them. I'll reverse it with you. And then we'll go from there. After is catalog max. If it's this, then that's it. Um, if it's not it, then pop on to discord and uh, toss it in there. But if it's this, I've got it and we'll take a look at that. The next time we have a quick stream, um, basically when we're not doing coding or, you know, reversing whatever I coded or looking at the submissions, then, um, we'll do quick streams of just simple software. Look at, you know, ideas for what to write or how it could better be written and then challenge our minds to learn because if you learn the principles of how to do math, you'll always be able to do math. Now, if you just learn that 2 plus 2 is 4, you don't know how it's 4, then you don't really know how to do 2 plus 3. But stick around long enough, you'll learn the language, you'll learn the lingo, you'll learn the principles, and you can do anything. Have a good day. As always, thanks for watching.